any comments you might have, we are on Twitter. Just use hashtag MKTDAY. Julia Lee, what a great start to the new trading week. It's fantastic to see the Australian market finally beat the US market. We saw the US having a pretty good session on Friday, up by half a percent. And the lead-ins for the Australian market, while they were positive, they weren't looking too crash hot. We did see base metal prices on the LME, the London's Metals Exchange, down on Friday. And yet, despite all this, we managed a gain of 2.6 percent. And if I just bring up the market map, this is the All Ordinaries Index, and green signals any stock that managed to gain. You can see it's pretty much green across Across the board. In fact, every single sector trading higher. The best areas were those growth areas, the materials, the energy, the industrial sectors gaining more than 3%. There is one big bright spot of red there, and that's Commonwealth Bank, but that's tr because it's traded ex dividend today. And of course, earnings season really kicking off. We saw Ansel coming out with, with its result. Its stock up by 4%. Leighton's was up by massive 8.3%, a bit of a relief rally after its results. Newcrest down by 0.8%, but we did see gold prices off over the weekend and UGL down by 1.9 percent. One of the best performers on the market today was McMahon Holdings. It came out to deny a report that it's about to win a contract in Ma Mongolia. Didn't stop its share price rising almost 12 percent today. But one thing we did see was smaller volumes coming through. Less than 5.5 billion dollars worth of stock traded and that's because it's holidays in most of the world today. If we have a look at India, South Korea, they'll be closed and most of Europe will be close tonight as well. What are your, your thoughts, I suppose, in terms of the, you know, the, the importance, if you like, of that Japanese GDP figure and, and what it means for the, the broader global economy to see them coming back online? Japanese GDP numbers for the last quarter certainly did give the region a boost and that's the main reason for the outperformance today. We have a look at what the expectations were around GDP contraction in Japan. It was for contraction of 2.6 percent year on year and we only saw half of that contraction of 1.3 percent and if we break it down quarter on quarter the market was expecting to see contraction of 0.6 percent but it only saw contraction of 0.3 percent. Breaking it down even further and the components are looking quite hopeful. In fact, we th saw things like TV demand, a very strong support there, and we did see a switch into uh, uh, digital, and that helped TV sales. But exports was still a problem, down by 4.9%, uh, the worst since that we've seen uh, since the Lehman's time. But altogether, those numbers much better than what the market was anticipating, and it certainly gave the Australian market a big boost. Japan's still the third largest economy in the world, and we have seen, as, um, as Jeremy mentioned, supply disruptions, especially in terms of the technology space. So given that a lot of people are bearish on technology uh, with the picture in the US economy, uh, I guess this is going to be a big boost for those tech stocks tonight. Julie, I suppose after today's session and, and Friday's as well and this good news out of Japan, in terms of uh, these gains we've seen then on our local market, are you confident that we're going to see a sustained period, if you like, in terms of positive moves? We're certainly seeing at least a short-term bounce and today was an important technical day because we did see an important level being filled. If we have a look at the intraday chart first of all, the intraday chart very bullish. We started on the lows and we finished on the highs, so a bullish signal going into our session tomorrow. But this morning I said 4,276 points is an important level. In this huge rundown that we've seen in August, we've seen a number of gaps in this rundown and gaps are important because if they are unfair fulfilled it does signal quite a bearish market and if we have a look at that rundown in August for the Australian market this is what it looks like you can see that gap there has just been filled today and that's a strong sign for the Australian market so short term this reversal certainly still in place in terms of our key stocks so looking a little bit more uncertain Rio Tinto is one that we've been uh, following for a while now if we have a look at Rio Tinto this is just over the last couple of years so you can see that in August we saw that important support level at 77.50 being broken and it's still wandering uh, below that. Now below that it's pretty much no man's land till around about the $57 mark so we want to see Rio Tinto be able to get back above that 77.50 mark to be quite confident on a recovery in the Australian market because of course the mining stocks play such a big part. The other area we've been watching closely are the banks. Now it's an important time for the banks because we saw an update last week from Commonwealth as well as from NAB and usually when we see these updates and earnings reports come out, it's a pivot point or a turning point for 
the banks. Unfortunately, we haven't seen that flow through for the charts. And if we have a look at Commonwealth Bank, this is just in the last year. You can see that downtrend very much in place. And really what we need to see is a break of that $48 mark. And that would signal a break in that downtrend and more positive days for the banks. Just quickly, your thoughts on Newcrest? Well, if we have a look at Newcrest, it's got an unhedged book, which means that it participates uh, fully in the gold price movement. And if we have a look at production, it was up by 43%. Add to that chart in gold prices, and I've shown it a number of times now. Since 2008, we've seen that massive gold price trend in place. But I guess the thing of concern here is that its mine production costs were up by a massive 65%. It is facing labor costs, um, labor costs going up, as well as input prices going up, like a lot of the miners. Lahir is still the biggest contributor to its earnings in terms of Lahir. It is looking at a $1.2 billion expansion, so trying to hit that 1 million ounce mark by 2013, so ramping that up, and that should be supportive as long as the gold prices stay. And despite the, uh, the, the short-term reversal on the Australian share market, I guess today was still a very volatile day when you see the materials, the energy sector, and the industrial sector moving 3%. We've still got volatility. It's just in the direction that a lot of long investors want it to be. In, and the macro issues still haven't been resolved and that's why that meeting on Tuesday night between Merkel and Sarkozy is going to be very closely watched by the market.